Well, I'm so excited to be with everybody tonight and thank you all for being on the call. I love doing presentations and love talking about membership and uh, always start with why, right? That's one of my favorite books. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Start with why by Simon Sinek. So when I look at my why and Kiwanis, it's because I want to help Kiwanis grow so that we can serve more kids and more needs in our community. Uh, you know, we've been saying for years now, kids need Kiwanis. Uh, and I like to say kids need more Kiwanians. Uh, so the more Kiwanians we have, the more kids we're going to be able to help and the more uh, kids we're going to be able to serve. So uh, that's what it's all about for me is growing Kiwanis and trying to help uh, more kids in our communities. We've been through a rough couple of years. Uh, the pandemic, I know, was a challenge for most of our clubs. I'm sure it was for your clubs as well. Uh, but I'm really excited about the opportunities we have going forward uh, here in 2022 and into next year. Uh, and I think, I don't know about your district, but I know in my district and some other districts, I've been looking at their membership numbers. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do uh, because we're still going to find some clubs at the end of this year that don't quite make it into 2022-23. And we're going to have a lot of work to do. Uh, as I talked about when I was governor, uh, membership cannot just be one particular focus. It's got to be three different focuses all at the same time, uh, which is membership retention, uh, growing and by adding new clubs, and also growing the clubs that you have. So you can't grow unless you do all three of those things. So tonight I want to share some ideas with you. Uh, a lot of these are really just kind of big picture ideas and concepts, things I've been thinking about and working on and studying over the last few years. Uh, it's some food for thought. You may not agree with all of my comments tonight, and that's great. I like it when we don't always agree, because that means we can talk it through, we can look at different ideas, and maybe we can make the organization even better as a result of some of the conversations that we have uh, sometimes when we don't agree about ideas. But let me say this, if you don't like some of the things I say, it's quite all right. If your club is doing great and you're growing and what I say doesn't work for you, then that's okay. Take it with a grain of salt. But I just want to share a few thoughts and ideas I have with you uh, from, some, from some work that I've done over the last uh, couple of years here uh, in Kiwanis. So hopefully you're seeing my screen now. Uh, so I call this Meetings, Millennials, and Marketing. So we're going to talk a little bit about, about each of those topics. Uh, on the topic of Millennials, this is something I got to work on while I was a member of a Kiwanis International Subcommittee on New Club Opening, uh, where we looked at intergenerational engagement and how do we get the various generations uh, not only to engage younger members, but for the members that we do have, what is it about those generations and their qualities and characteristics that they may be able to use to attract other members like them into their clubs. Because we know a lot of times when you're recruiting, it's much easier to recruit someone that's from your peer group or your age uh, instead of trying to recruit someone that's much younger than you. But tonight I will talk a lot about recruiting younger members because I know in Kiwanis, that's something we all, what most clubs are talking about. And the reason is, is for Kiwanis to continue and to exist for another hundred years, we've got to always be thinking about bringing in younger members so that we're a sustainable, viable organization. So I think this discussion starts with this conversation, which is that communication is just different now than it's ever been before. Do you remember when you first saw dot com? on a TV commercial or in a magazine commercial or something, you said, what's .com? I don't even know what that is. Well, the world's changed a lot since the mid nineties uh, or whenever you first started seeing .com and advertisements and everyone started having a website on this thing called the World Wide Web. So just to kind of see where you are, I ask this question of everyone when I start my presentations is what was the primary method of communication when you were born? You don't have to answer out loud. I think everybody's on mute, uh, but just think to yourself, what was the primary method of communication when you were born? So the iPhone, probably not. I don't think we have any key clubbers on the call tonight, uh, but what about this? This is from my generation. Uh, when I was born, uh, this was a device that was out around the time I was born. I never had one of those, wish I did. Uh, you might remember the rotary telephone. Some of you had those, I'm sure. And then you may remember this thing, whatever this thing is called. I think it's called a phone booth. Uh, can't believe we used to go and you throw money in a slot and you walk into that little room there and you make a phone call. 
Uh, young people think this is a spaceship now. And then some of you may remember this. This was your primary mode of communication around the time you were born. And then of course we have some members in Kiwanis who this might be their primary mode of communication. So uh, a lot of different generations represented by all those different technologies uh, with the telephone. Just to give you a quick overview, we're gonna talk about very briefly the five uh, generations uh, and how they see things differently and how that relates to us in Kiwanis. And I'm going to go through these charts pretty quickly with you, but I will note that the links, uh, the link at the bottom, intergenerationalengagement.com, uh, is a great website run by my friend Dylan Calkhurst. And Dylan spoke at the Kiwanis International Convention a few years ago in Orlando. And I'll share a slide here in a couple minutes that has his contact information. Uh, he's, he's also got a great book that I've used as a resource for these issues. So silent generation, the traditionalists, age 76 to 93, signposts that shape their generation, of course, the Great Depression. Some of their values are they prefer communication by the written word. That's how they prefer to communicate. Uh, and they expect respect, they expect respect of their seniority, and they prefer one-on-one -on -one communication and in-person meetings. That's pretty much a given. We know that. What about the baby boomers, age 57 to 75? Uh, their preferred communication is a phone call. Uh, they want respect from younger generations also, and they enjoy in-person meetings. Well, what about Generation X? That's age 41 to 56. That's where I fall. We grew up on computers, and our preferred communication method is email. Text is second to that. I'm actually the reverse. I prefer a text message over an email. Uh, Gen X demands uh, many options. They like to have a lot of flexibility and options. Uh, they want work-life balance, uh, but they're also comfortable working virtually. So this whole pandemic and going to remote work and using Zoom meetings, Gen X kind of fit right into that. And we're very happy to do that. Well, what about our millennials, also called Gen Y, age 23 to 40? Uh, and, and Anna the other night had to fact check me uh, on a couple of things that I said. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the millennials tonight. We sometimes, I think, our perception is, well, they're just still kids. You know, they're not going to join Kiwanis. They're too young to join Kiwanis. But look at this. The oldest millennials are now 40, actually, I think, turning 41 this year. And they, many of them, have adult children now. So millennials aren't just some group of kids that we're not going to attract to Kiwanis. They're actually the future of Kiwanis. So we need to be doing everything we can to attract them and get them in Kiwanis. Signposts that shape their generation, rise of the internet, the first laptops, the introduction of social media. That is huge. Texting is how they communicate. They use their phone for everything except talking on it. So that's something to keep in mind. They don't really like to get on the phone. Some millennials are almost terrified of using the telephone. They just don't want to make phone calls. Diversity is the norm, and they believe they can change the world. I think this is the biggest opportunity that we have with millennials is that they absolutely do believe that they can change the world, and they really want to do it. And then they also crave meaningful work very important to them. They're not like previous generations that would punch a time clock and be happy to do what the boss told them just because the boss told them to do it. That's not going to be good enough. They want to know why they're doing it. And it also has to have some higher level of meaning to them for them to really be satisfied and driven by the work it is that they're doing. That's also a great opportunity for Kiwanis that we'll talk about more in a few minutes. Attention span is huge these days. I don't mean it's huge. I mean, it's a huge issue because it's getting smaller and smaller, uh, probably day by day. Uh, this slide is outdated now. It's a couple of years old, but the attention span in 2000 was 12 seconds. The average human attention span uh, today, which was a couple of years ago, was eight and a quarter seconds, uh, which is less than a goldfish. Uh, I've seen some research now saying we're getting down to like four and five seconds of an attention span. A lot of that is driven again by this device. I'm going to pick this up and hold this phone a lot to talk about this phone and this device. So especially with young people that are using uh, really social media, it's about what? It's about scrolling through from one page to the next page instantly. And if something doesn't grab their attention in a couple of seconds, guess what they do? It's as easy as just swiping up 
to go to the next thing on their page. Instagram posts, you can swipe through 20 of them in a couple of seconds. So you've really got a very, very short amount of time to get the attention of a millennial. And so if you're advertising your Kiwanis Club or trying to get a young person interested in Kiwanis, you've got some challenges there. So this is the reference that I, I cited for you. Uh, Dylan also, I believe, still has on his website, and it's also on his YouTube page, a uh, video from the keynote he did at the Kiwanis International Convention in Orlando. It's really funny, really entertaining, and he goes into a lot more depth on these intergenerational issues. Uh, I did an interview with Dylan in a webinar we did for Kiwanis International uh, several months ago, which is also just really fascinating. If you ask around, I'm sure you can find that link or let me know and I can share it with you later. Uh, was a webinar that I did with Dylan and some other members from the uh, subcommittee on new club opening. So here's the problem that we face folks. One is that we have a couple of impediments to growth. Uh, the first is that we're inflexible or we're too rooted in tradition instead of mission. Uh, if you've ever heard Steve Siemens talk, you know he talks about this a lot. Some clubs are just so focused on their traditions that they lose sight of our mission. And sometimes those traditions get in the way uh, and refusal to change, even if it means your club is failing to attract new members, that's a big problem. Let me say this, I'm not advocating getting rid of our traditions. That, that is what makes Kiwanis Kiwanis. Uh, however, if those traditions get in the way of us growing and being a sustainable organization that can exist for another hundred years, then we've got to reevaluate what's more important. Is it our mission or is it those traditions? Number two impediment to growth, the culture of Kiwanis and our brand is rooted in meetings, even though service is what we're really all about. So for probably 80 or 90 years of Kiwanis International's history, the focus of clubs has been built around this culture of meetings. We have meetings to discuss the projects. We have committee meetings to discuss planning new projects. Everything is built around meetings. Now, a lot of folks, especially in those older generations that we reviewed, they love meetings and they love in-person meetings. So I would not tell you to stop having meetings, especially if you're a club with gener uh, members from the older generations, boomer and traditionalists, then you want to continue to have your meetings because it's a social thing that your members are probably part of Kiwanis just like you are because you love that social interaction with your fellow Kiwanians. But if we are talking about attracting younger members and attracting other generations and even some busy Gen X folks like myself, uh, we got to rethink our culture of meetings. This pandemic has brought about one silver lining, which is the extremely fast adoption of technology that I did not believe that everybody would be able to jump on to Zoom uh, as much as we all have, especially in the Kiwanis world. And I know a lot of us still aren't sure how to unmute ourselves or we talk for half the meeting while we're on mute, we're still trying to figure out the mute button sometimes, but it's been amazing that we've accelerated this adoption of this technology so quickly. Right now is an opportunity in Kiwanis. You can redesign your Kiwanis Club and you can redesign the Kiwanis experience any way you like. This is a very unique point in time in our history that because of the pandemic, I, I, I said this recently, you know, we used to talk about thinking out of, outside of the box, thinking outside of the box. Now I say there is no box. The box is gone. So you can just do whatever you want to now to innovate and think about ways that you can make Kiwanis better and more attractive to more people to a wider, broader audience. Uh, that being said, and I'm talking a little bit negative about meetings tonight, uh, I do think there is a hunger right now uh, for people to get back to in-person meetings. And I've recently, just within the last week or two, uh, Florida's kind of officially been open most of the pandemic, but most of us have still shied away from actually meeting in public and having you know big groups of people getting together. This week is really the first time that started to change for me personally, that I've been to several in-person events that are very well attended. So I think there's a hunger right now for people to get back to meeting in person. I don't know if that's gonna last 
And there are some other things we'll talk about that I think may be a problem for that. Most people don't want more meetings in their life, especially folks that are still working or they work in corporate America or even small businesses. They just have too many meetings. So most people don't want more meetings in their life. They want more meaning. And that's something that Kiwanis can offer in buckets. We can give people a meaningful life. I always say service to other people leads to a richer and fuller life. When I'm trying to recruit someone in Kiwanis, that's one of the first things that I will tell them is for me personally, yes, I get the satisfaction of helping someone else in the community, but I'm really helping myself because it helps me to lead a happier, more fulfilled, satisfying life through the service that I get to do in Kiwanis. So everybody these days, especially young people, it's a generational thing. They want their work to have meaning. And I love Anna said this the other night in, in a meeting that I was in with her, is that's a great way to recruit young professionals and millennials is if they're in a job where they're not getting that meaning from their job, from their day job, Kiwanis can be that alternative for them that helps them find meaning in the volunteer work that they do if they're not getting that in their day job. So my Kiwanis induction ceremony, four young professionals there, plus a great gentleman that inducted me into the club. This was about 15 years ago. I'm the only person left in Kiwanis out of this picture. And the reason was is because the Kiwanis club just didn't add enough value to these folks for them to want to stay in Kiwanis and to make the commitment that was required to be a member of my club at the time. So this is about 15 years ago. We had weekly lunch meetings. We had a weekly Meals on Wheels project. We had committee or board meetings, and we had other service projects, which usually equaled about seven to 10 commitments a month. That was just absolutely too much for these young professionals to sign up for. And even though they're really good guys and they wanted to help serve their community, they just couldn't make that type of a commitment to Kiwanis. So what do most younger members want from Kiwanis? The things here on the left side of the slide, more service, more meaning, less meetings, lower dues, hands-on service opportunities. If you try to recruit younger members to help you plan the golf tournament or the pancake breakfast, they're not gonna be interested in that. They wanna go volunteer on a Saturday morning down at the local food bank, and they wanna see a stack of boxes on this side of the room get sorted out and put into bags on the other side of the room and see it go onto the van that's gonna get delivered to the families in need. They want to see in two or three or four hours the fruits of their labor and see that their volunteer work is impacting their community. They can't get that same immediate sense of an impact from planning a golf tournament, even if it raises $20,000, $30,000, which is a great thing. And our clubs need to continue to do that because we put a lot of money in our communities from those fundraisers. But for young people, writing the check to the charity is not as exciting for them as it is to see the hand, their hands-on service and the results of that hands-on service. They also want social activities and asynchronous, or asynchronous, excuse me, asynchronous communication, meaning they don't need to come to the meeting to get the details about the project. They don't need to come to the meeting to be told about the upcoming service projects. They want to be able to find out about those opportunities on their own time, whether that's through a text message, social media, maybe email, maybe not, because some millennials don't really even read email that much, or an event calendar, a place they know they can go and see all of the upcoming events in one place. That's the best way to communicate with younger members. Here's the most important thing to consider for potential members in 2022. You've got to offer flexibility and options. Think about how much the world has changed in the last two years. I didn't have groceries delivered to my house before the pandemic. Now my wife loves it. We have groceries delivered all the time. We've got Amazon dropping things off at the house almost, it seems like, every day. Uh, these, these things that we kind of just would typically go to a store and do something, people don't want to leave their house now, uh, especially if they've been working remotely for a couple of years. A lot of people have gotten used to protecting that time more than ever. And especially if they have a young family, they've really, which I think is a good thing for society, 
people have reevaluated. Do I want to leave my family and kids to go to this meeting or to go do whatever this event is? Or do I want to maximize the time I get to spend with my family? And so people are choosing to stay home and spend more time with their family versus leaving the house and driving across town or spending an hour or two hours in the car there and back for a Kiwanis meeting. The other thing you have to offer them is convenience. And again, that's part of this, whether it's good or bad. Culturally now, we've got to a place where we can have anything we want almost immediately. Information immediately. I want groceries, I can get them this afternoon. Amazon, I can almost get that same day depending on what I'm ordering. So we've got accustomed to this convenience and the sense of immediate gratification. If Kiwanis is not offering that, it's going to be difficult to break through uh, some of that. Also, most importantly, Kiwanis has got to be a valuable use of their time. And we have to be thinking about what's in it for them. A lot of times, which is still important, we focus on the needs of our current members instead of thinking about the needs of our potential members. Well, as Kiwanis is getting smaller, focusing on our current members and not on our potential members is an impediment to our growth. So we've got to think about what's in it for the people out there who we haven't met yet, who we haven't convinced to join us yet. And we've got to build an organization that meets their needs and their wants and their desires. Here's the big takeaway I want you to remember if you don't remember anything else I say tonight. We have to make it easier to be a member of Kiwanis, not harder. It's got to be easy to attend the meeting. It's got to be easy to pay. It's got to be easy to participate. It's got to be easy to serve. That's the most important thing. So here's where inflexibility can hurt a club. So based on your current meeting, and this was my lunch club 15 years ago, this was us. And we've made some changes now that we offer an after hours happy hour meeting in addition to our lunch meeting. So it's been a huge, huge benefit for us. But based on your current meeting schedule, especially if you're a lunch club, you are excluding potential members, including teachers or advisors of your SLP clubs, young professionals, and employees who don't have a flexible work schedule. There are so many people that we exclude if we only meet at lunchtime when folks that are working can't leave their job to come to a Kiwanis meeting. And we can tell them it's okay, you can skip the meeting, but a lot of people feel bad if they sign up to be a member and they don't ever show up to a meeting, they feel bad about it. So think about how you can offer, uh, add or replace a meeting to meet at a different day, time, or location, or in this new world we're in, maybe meet remotely or hybrid. Maybe you have a regular lunch meeting, but then you offer a once a month Zoom meeting as well. Uh, and hybrids, I think some clubs are doing well with hybrids. You have to do it right. And if you're not doing it right, don't do it. And what I mean by doing it right, you have to remember it's an interactive meeting between the people on the Zoom call and the real people in the actual room. And you can't have two separate meetings. If you're going to do that, then just forget it. But you've got to have an interactive meeting with the folks on Zoom have to be involved in the meeting that's happening in person in the room. If you're not doing that, don't try to have a hybrid meeting. Just have a separate meeting uh, remotely. Here's a problem for a lot of our clubs is a lack of innovation. The current culture of the club refuses to change the format of the meetings or still wants to do things the same way we always have because that's the way we've always done it. That type of thinking, you know where else I've seen that type of thinking before? is with Kodak, Blockbuster, BlackBerry. BlackBerry said, no, everybody wants to have the little, uh, you know, everybody wants to have the keys so they can type on their BlackBerry. Uh, and iPhone ate their lunch. Uh, cab companies, we still have cab companies. I know you got them in California. We still have them certainly here in Orlando, Florida. We're the tourist capital of the world, I think. But uh, cab companies are still here, but, but Uber is taking a big, big chunk out of the cab companies. And then I don't know about you and your shopping malls, but when I go to the mall, which is very, very infrequently, the malls are dying. So things change. And if we don't get out in front of the change, then we're not going to be around uh, when culture changes and we're not there to adapt to it. 
So real quick, I want to talk a couple minutes. Uh, I know a lot of your clubs do social media, so I'm not going to get into details on this, but just a couple reminders and some thoughts. So when you are using social media, the number one thing is we've got to use fun pictures. We have got to put more pictures out into the world. And this great thing called the internet allows us to put a lot of pictures out there if we want to. But it's got to be fun pictures of people volunteering and having fun and as many young people as you can find to get a photograph of them volunteering. That's better also if you're trying to appeal to other younger members. Uh, pictures worth a thousand words. So people want to see uh, children. They want to see children being served or helped. They want to see people having fun while they're volunteering. Uh, they want to see families volunteering, especially if you're trying to recruit young families to be a part of Kiwanis, you need to show them some pictures of young families volunteering and having fun together. And whether it's for a service project or not, animals are going to always get you a lot of attention because, I mean, who doesn't want to see a picture of a cute doggy or kitty? Uh, here's a great experiment. I did this just, I don't know, this is a uh, maybe a year or two ago. I was just curious if you do a Google image search and that's where you go to Google and you click the option just to search images and you do a Google image search for Kiwanis Club. This is a representative screen of what you would see and you can scroll through and see 10 pages that all pretty much look like this. And of course, what do we recognize first and foremost is that beautiful blue banner from all of our Kiwanis clubs, which again is one of those traditions. I'm not saying get rid of the tradition, but I'm saying we need to maybe think about it a little bit differently. So when the world Googles Kiwanis Club, this is what they're seeing, which tends to be older men standing in front of this blue banner shaking somebody's hand. And I know these pictures get put in every local newspaper all over the country uh, because those newspapers will print these pictures for us, which is great. The problem is when the world does go to look and see what in the world does this Kiwanis word mean, and they Google it, this is the kind of thing that's coming up more often than what we want them to see is if they Googled volunteering, these are the kind of images they see for volunteering. People smiling, having fun, hands-on service, doing work. So if Kiwanis is truly about service and helping kids, we need a lot more content out there on the internet and through our social media showing us doing these types of projects. Real quick, there's some, some, some disruption going on. TikTok has gotten huge. Uh, I, I, I don't use TikTok, but it's a huge platform and the demographics. I used to think it was just very, very young, 18 to 24. And now the numbers are showing that it's actually much older uh, demographic as well as starting to use TikTok. Instagram is very, very huge and popular, but the big one is still internationally is, of course, Facebook. But look at number two is YouTube. And this stat, I just looked this up recently. This blew me away. There are one billion hours of video on YouTube watched daily. A billion hours of video is watched daily on YouTube. So I think our Kiwanis Clubs, with the great service projects we do, we got to get more video uh, out there because video is what's really getting more engagement every day on all of the social media platforms. And some of them, like Instagram, have, have come out and said photographs on Instagram are going to start kind of being, well, they'll still be there, but we're not going to put them out and publicize them. They're not going to go out uh, to the world to see. They're going to prioritize pushing out video uh, through Instagram. And these are 30 second videos, 15 second videos, maybe a minute long videos. So you don't have to be a film producer to make some big long movie, uh, but just think about your social media strategy and how you can improve it with using video. Uh, Gen Z is using fewer platforms compared to millennials, uh, but not by much. I mean, they're, they're still using social media quite a bit and especially TikTok. Couple of tips, and then I'm going to wrap up here in just a couple minutes. 
Uh, Orlando Volunteers is a meetup page we started here about five years ago, and we'll advertise all of our division's Kiwanis volunteer projects. Any event somebody has, we'll post it on meetup. Meetup.com is a website for people that want to go look up some type of meeting or some type of group that they can join about whatever it is. It could be chess. It could be sailing. It could be playing hopscotch. I mean, who knows? If there's a group They've got a page on Meetup, and so we have a page called Orlando Volunteers, and we have 5,000 members that are subscribed to the page. So when we post an event, it can go out to as many people that are on Meetup that subscribe to us. It may show up in their feed, very similar to Facebook, uh, but, it, but it's $16 a month. But it's a great way. We've been having lots of success in the Orlando area. Uh, we did a road cleanup a couple of weeks ago and we had 20, 25 volunteers show up, brand new people, never heard of Kiwanis, but they showed up because of this Orlando volunteer site that we run. Uh, just some things to think about on your copy when you're out there marketing to folks that you want to bring into Kiwanis. Notice it's not called Orlando Kiwanis. Because Kiwanis, quite frankly, is, a, is kind of a strange word to people. They don't know what the word means. And like I said, that, that scrolling, as soon as someone sees something they don't understand or they don't get it, they move on. Orlando volunteers, very simple. They know what Orlando is and they know what volunteering is and that's what they're looking to do. Kiwanis, you have too much of a barrier to explain what Kiwanis is before someone's already moved on. So we don't call it Orlando Kiwanis. We do say that this group is sponsored by Kiwanis and it's about having fun while helping make the world a better place. That's super important. We also use the phrase, doing good deeds makes you happy. So join us by getting involved in service projects that change lives while getting to know people in your community. So we're offering fun, we're offering meaning, and we're offering an opportunity to meet other people and have social interactions with people. And certainly in a, in a city like Orlando, we find that when people move here, they use Meetup to find groups that they can go out to meet new people. And it's a very safe way to go meet new people and make friends is by going to volunteer somewhere. So we've had a lot of success with that. We don't post any projects that would involve our key clubbers or SLP because we're going to have strangers show up and we don't know who's showing up but it's great for uh, food bank projects or like this top post was a concession stand at the uh, Arnold Palmer, Arnold Palmer uh, Invitational Golf Tournament that we just had this weekend. Uh, Eventbrite, another great place to post your volunteer projects. You'll get a lot of folks that'll find you through Eventbrite and then Nextdoor. Uh, Nextdoor has been great for some of our clubs because people that are on Nextdoor care about their community. They wanna get involved. So go find them where they are and they're on a site like Nextdoor. So those are my ideas. I love uh, talking about this stuff. And if you have any of your own ideas that have worked for you, uh, send me an email, todd at ctodlaw.com. And I'll put that in the chat also. I love getting emails from folks, share your success stories. If you didn't like something I said, please email me and we'll talk about it. Uh, but I appreciate being here.